Hey guys, so we understand that there's a lot of new tax professionals on the scene today. And so today I wanted to make this video talking about why purchasing a tax franchise was one of the worst decisions that I made when first entering this business. My name is Carmen Mohan and I'm the CEO and founder of Strength Tax. And we're a virtual tax and accounting firm based out of Long Island, New York, that services all 50 states. Now, many of you may not know how purchasing a tax franchise work, so let's get started there. First, in order to purchase a franchise, what you are actually purchasing are the rights to build a store in a specific location. Let's say this box is the location I'm looking to purchase. The franchisor will tell me that I can build a store between block A and block B in the points between block C and block D. So that was going to be the location rights that I am purchasing. And in my case, when I first made this purchase, I had to pay $40,000 in order to purchase the rights for the territory. Now, apart from purchasing the rights of the territory, you then have to lease a commercial space, pay first month's rent and security deposit in order to lease the commercial space, then pay for signage, and then pay for utilities just to get up and running. In my case, when I made this initial investment, we were all in about $65,000 before we can even open our doors for business. The number one reason why this was a, such a big mistake for us in our situation is that the initial investment was way too high. We already started off negative $65,000 before we were even able to actually open our doors and collect some revenue back. The second reason why this could also be a big mistake for a new tax professional as yourself is that is the tax franchise business model proven? Back in 2014, when we made this initial investment to purchase this franchise, we felt that having a national brand franchise would automatically bring us a ton of business because they were national brands. And we were very, very wrong. Although the national brand did bring in some business, it wasn't an increased amount where we felt like we were going to recoup our funds right away in the first tax season of being open. This means that is their business model actually really proven? Now, these franchises may say that because their marketing and advertising strategies are on such high levels that you will automatically get all of this business to your door, which sounds great. You guys have to keep in mind when building your tax firm for yourself, you have to have a proven business model that outside of their advertising and marketing strategies, you already have a plan that will help you set up yourself for success. That is what a proven business model actually is. A plan that will bring you from A to Z to help you earn six or seven figures that has already been proven. For a lot of the national brands now, a lot of their business models, although they have proven success, they don't actually have up-to-date business strategies. They don't have the innovative strategies that are needed today to build a successful tax firm. That is one of the reasons why I want to tell you guys as tax professionals, make sure that you do your due diligence and that you fully research these national brands that you're looking to invest into, especially at such high investment amounts. You don't want to be $50,000 in or $100,000 in and you don't know if you actually have a proven business success model from someone in this industry that has already done what you are now trying to do. Which leads me to my next point. The next reason why I say purchasing a tax franchise was such a mistake when it came to us and building our business is that the royalty fees are very, very expensive. Royalty fees are franchise fees that come off of the gross revenue of your sales. In this particular case, for the national brand that we invested in, our royalty fees were set to be 18%. Now that's a high number because that means that 18% of our gross revenue, meaning before expenses, was going to be automatically taxed to us and due to be paid to the franchisor. 
In the scenario that I used earlier, if we already started out negative $65,000 before we can even earn one penny, now let's say we earned $100,000 in that tax season. We would have to recoup our initial $65,000 as well as give away $18,000 of our gross sales back to the franchisor. And we're not even talking about any of the other expenses like our own marketing or our own payroll or any of the other costs that we have to factor in to actually make the first $100,000. Royalty fees can make or break your business because if you have to give such a high percentage in fees back to your franchisor, whether that's fees under your service bureau fees, royalty fees, bank fees, there's a plenty of fees that come into place when purchasing a franchise that you need to keep in mind because those fees will automatically reduce your profits, reduce your gross revenue, and it will leave you at looking at your end of the year balance sheet, like where did all of the revenue that we earned go? So tax professionals, please do your due diligence, make sure you read your contracts and you know all of the fees that are going to be factored in to your purchase before deciding to commit to a tax franchise investment. Reason number four, alternative financing. In the national brand that we invested in, they had a an in-house bank that had alternative financing options. We know that in our industry as tax professionals, a lot of us start out as seasonal businesses. What I mean by seasonal businesses is that we only have a certain amount of time in our industry, it used to be from January to April, of revenue coming in. And so that's the first four months of revenue. For our industry, if we had commercial spaces, we need to pay 12 months of expenses. What a lot of these national brands did over the years was create their own in-house banks in order to be able to offer alternative financing for their franchisees for the months that they could not pay their bills. So what they did was they said, I'm going to help you generate your revenue after you generate your revenue or previous to, to the tax season, if you need some cash flow in order to run your business, I'm going to also finance you $25,000, $50,000, whatever you were qualified for. And it sounds great in retrospect because now you have access to more funds and cash flow to run your business, but it's not. I watched throughout the years a lot of franchisees take this alternative financing, make their money during the tax season, pay the alternative financing, pay their staff, pay themselves, end up broke, having to pull more money out from the alternative financing just to keep themselves afloat. And although they were able to pay themselves in the beginning or the middle or the end of the year, however they structured their finances, it still was a flaw because they had a lot of high debt in their business, which minimized their cash flow and ultimately at the end, minimized their profit margins. So their businesses weren't as profitable as the ones that could automatically keep themselves afloat watch their expenses, and reinvest back into their company. The businesses or the tax franchises that all opted in for these alternative financing methods, a lot of them never got to see any additional cash flow being brought in, and they were always in the circle of high debt, low earning, low profit. And I don't want that for you guys, so that's why I'm even mentioning it in this video. Number five, the legal binding that the tax franchises put you under. A lot of us sign these franchise agreements, and in my case, I was 25 years old when I signed mine, and these franchise agreements are pages and pages and pages of legal jargon. Many of us are so happy to make an initial business investment that we're not fully reading through these contracts or paperwork, fully not understanding what we're signing in for or onto, right? In my case, many of you may ask, Hey Carmen, if you purchase a tax franchise, why do you no longer own the franchise today? Well, I will tell you, in the case of my story, our deal went bad and we were not able to complete the deal fully. As soon as the deal went sour, the corporate location of the national brand reached out to us and let us know that we had no rights to everything that we purchased. 
They let us know because we purchased the territory, even though the deal wasn't going to be fully executed, that they sent us legal paperwork that we were to give them all of our territory back. They told us that we did not own rights to our commercial leases because we purchased the commercial leases after purchasing the territories. Now, at that time and point, we had to get lawyers to come on board, and they then went through all of these franchise documentations. At the end of it, what did we figure out? That the franchise had all rights to our business and that they were actually correct. That means that the initial $65,000 that we invested was still for nothing because they owned all intellectual property and all rights to everything that we have purchased, built, researched, and mapped out on our own. Thankfully, we got to save ourselves from that after very much costly legal fees to our lawyers. Now, tax professional, I'm not saying this to dampen your next business moves, but only to enlighten you and to give you the information that you're going to need when starting in this industry. When purchasing a tax franchise, these franchise agreements have hundreds of pages of legal jargon that a lot of this jargon contains that the franchise has majority rule rights as the majority partner. Now, you may say, I'm starting my own business, Carmen. I'm not in partnership with the franchise. Well, when you sign these franchise agreements, you are actually signing a partnership and they have or own some rights to your business. I want to make sure that you guys know this information so that you can take these franchise agreements over to your lawyers and so that they can really break down what it is it's going into this execution of this purchase of this franchise. I really hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you like this video, like this information, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to make a lot more content for tax professionals. I understand how hard it is to build a tax business. I went through all the ups and downs that you could possibly think of. We're going to make a lot more videos for you guys, you tax pros, to make sure you guys are enlightened and know the right things to do when it comes to building your tax business.